are you done talking? Tell me, baby, are you done talking? Yeah. No, we are not done talking. This is Talk the Things, the ACWWS YouTube channel. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. Greetings, I'm Asa Weir Soli. And I am Anna Rydia Molina. Welcome to Taught the Things, the YouTube channel for the Association of Caribbean Women Writers and Scholars. Today we have a special guest in our studio and I am so excited, Ana Menendez, the author of Love and Che. In Cuba, I was a German Shepherd, The Last War, and Adios, Happy Homeland. Ana is also the director of the Humanities Edge program, which I am a fellow, so you can imagine how excited I am for her to be here. Welcome to Talk the Things, oh, Anna. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be we here. We have been looking forward to your visit because your work really touches so many of my students here in Miami. Mm -hmm. And um, in Cuba, I was a German Shepherd, I know was a New York Times Notable Book of the Year in 2001. The title story also won a Pushcart Prize for short fiction. Why do you think that particular story resonates so much with people, both Cubans and non-Cubans? Um, that's a good question. You know, I would, when I, uh, I wrote that story partly in New York City and partly in New Delhi when I was living there. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember telling that joke at some gathering in India um, and in Pakistan as Can well. Can you tell us a little bit about the joke? Yes, the joke is, you want me to tell the joke? Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, the, the joke is a well-known Cuban joke and as it turns yeah. out I've since learned Almost every culture of migration has a version of this joke, oh, okay. um, and so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about the reaction mm -hmm. in India and Pakistan. But um, so briefly, the joke yeah. is um, there's a, a little uh, Cuban mutt who gets off the boat mm -hmm. uh, and he's wandering around the streets of Miami and um, looking at everything and saying, "Oh, how beautiful this is!" And so he sees this lovely French poodle, and um, being a not very enlightened yes. Cuban man when yeah. you know you do the piropos he says oh you know you're so cute you know would you like to uh, get married and have beautiful puppies oh, and cat call yeah, her. Yes. Yes. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, and uh, and she she looks down her nose at him and says uh, I'm sorry do you know who you're talking to I am a French poodle of, <laughs> of distinction and you are nothing but a mutt yes and he sort of gathers himself up and he says, well, here in Miami, I may be a mom, yeah. but in Cuba, I was a German Shepherd. Oh, oh, okay. And okay. so uh, I told that joke in <coughs> India and in Pakistan, and the, it was older people, mm -hmm. and the room just erupted with laughter because of course uh -huh. they have their own very yeah. painful yes. history yes. of partition yeah. and of having to flee one's land mm -hmm. for another land mm -hmm. when one was somebody or imagined oneself to be yeah. somebody right. uh, in the place they were from. Mm -hmm. And so I've since found, uh, this book is almost 20 years now, uh, old now, which mm -hmm. is amazing to consider because I don't feel 20 years old anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't look at yes. that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and it still resonates that joke when mm -hmm. I tell it to groups. They don't have to be Cuban. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that's a very long way of answering your question yes. of why yeah. it uh, was such a popular story and very it's the most anthologized story uh, that I, of mine that I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons is that we can all. I think even people who have not migrated yeah. Yeah. Uh, can look back to high school, mm -hmm. <laughs> perhaps yes. when they yeah, were somebody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we all have this feeling of existing in two places in time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and one, uh, it was perhaps better or had more potential. Yes. And yes. It, I think it taps into that very human uh, feeling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 No. I I, I, I I understand that coming from Jamaica as yeah. well because I know I grew up in a village in Jamaica, but my family on both mm -hmm. sides were well known, and mm -hmm. pretty well respected in yeah. the village, and so moving out of that context even into the larger Jamaican mm -hmm. society where nobody knew you know who I was like people didn't know you were a German didn't, shepherd didn't know I was exactly <laughs> yeah. you know and, and that was very strange I remember when my kids went back um, to visit Jamaica and they would walk on the street and folks would say oh you're Donna's child mm. and they would say how did the, my kids would come back and say mom how would they know mm -hmm. yeah. and I said because you have certain facial characteristics that you know mm -hmm. kind of gives you away yeah, right. 
you know and so they they they, they have the sense that they know what certain families look like they know mm -hmm. the marks in certain mm -hmm. families they can look at you and yeah. tell which family you're from right. and that was such a strange thing to my kids but that was such a commonplace right. thing mm -hmm. for me right. so that even on that level even if you're not wealthy yeah. you know you, you you can come from places where you have status because status is is um relative relative exactly yeah. status is right. relative. exactly yeah. so no indeed. definitely i agree i know for myself in the dominican republic and also coming here to the united states i can definitely um see some of those things and i think it's sort of um an immigrant's um ideal to want to fit in yeah. so we look for that as well so i mm -hmm. thank you for that answer mm -hmm. so anna i know can you tell us a little bit about the humanities edge i know for me the Humanities Edge has been wonderful in terms of mentoring, but I want to know why did you decide to take on this leadership role that I'm sure has probably taken away time from your writing? <laughs> yes, it has indeed, <laughs> although it has been enormously creative, so it has uh, you know, filled that part of okay. me. Uh, but thank you for the question yeah. because it's uh, something, it's an amazing program that I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I love to talk about. So yes. thank you for giving me the chance to talk <laughs> about it and plug it a little bit. Um, Anaridia is one of our um, yes. star no. uh, alumni <laughs> yes. of this program. We have many. Yes. Uh, it is an absolutely amazing uh, program yeah. um, funded very generously by the Mellon Foundation. We're very grateful mm -hmm. for their support. And it's... Um, uh, a big grant to promote um, the humanities yeah. and to support transfer students from Miami-Dade to FIU mm -hmm. uh, who are pursuing humanities degrees. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Mellon Foundation, together with uh, all of us at FIU and Miami-Dade, feel strongly about the importance of nurturing the whole human being in the way that the humanities does. Yes. Yes. And to ensuring that students are supported uh, when they make that decision to pursue the humanities because the wider society doesn't always offer that support, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And so why did I take the job? Uh, I, I felt very strongly in our times about doing something positive mm -hmm. for the arts, um, for immigrant students, which comprise most of our cohort. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember, never forget on that first day when yeah. I asked everybody to, uh, who had at least one parent born outside of the United States to raise their hand, and mm -hmm. almost every single person, it gives me chills, mm -hmm. uh, almost every single person of those 60 students raised their hand. Wow. Um, so this is a very powerful asset that we have in Miami, yeah. um, that we have at FIU and yes. Miami-Dade. Mm -hmm. And to be able to work with this group of students mm -hmm. to nurture their talents and yeah. their interests um, was something that I just couldn't pass up. Mm -hmm. Even though, yes, um, I have had no time <laughs> to write, <laughs> which is not a huge loss uh, to the world, of course. Um, of but course it is to me is. because it, it fills yeah. me. It is right. to yes. us. <laughs> Writing does fill me. Um, but as I said, there has been so much um, imagination that mm -hmm. has been required to build this program from yes. the ground up yes. in terms of programming, in terms of what we offer students, how we offer, how we deliver, that it has uh, filled that need mm -hmm. that I have, that I think all artists yeah. have to yes. create new exactly. things, to bring new exactly. things into mm -hmm. being. Right. So yes. I've been very fortunate yeah. to be able to yes. do this. Yeah. I agree, and writers are activists, and so yeah. there are lots of different ways. You know, sometimes you do have to take time away from the writing yes. to focus on mm -hmm. something else that is equally as important. Right. Yes. I'm also a Mellon Fellow. I'm yes. a 30 year Mellon Fellow, and she's a, a, a Mellon yes. Fellow twice over. Twice. Because I was in the Humanities Edge with <laughs> yes. you. And That's where it all a, started. In the right, where it all started, and now yeah. she's in HSI with yes. me. So, <laughs> so Mellon, so if you're listening, Mellon, if you're listening. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're this very grateful. Face of yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And the work yes. that you're yes. doing, Anna, is so important. I know I can speak for myself, but also I know um, for a lot of the students um, coming from a Caribbean background where the humanities, it's not that it's... Um, we devalue the humanities, but it's because, you know, there are other necessities, so they're not pushed as much as mm -hmm. the other careers, like businesses, medical school, yeah. like, so the humanities tend to sort of, like, be pushed to the side, so I know the humanities, for me, it just gave me this confidence about my pursuit with English literature, so I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. well, I, I want to mention that, that that word confidence mm -hmm. came up again and again in the post uh, uh, bridge survey that we did, uh -huh. and that 
to me uh, yeah. was just it was the best outcome mm -hmm. of the week because yeah. uh, to have a majority of students yeah. independently say yes. that in their in their comments was um, yeah that's what it's about mm -hmm. yeah. yep that's awesome um, what are the things critics say about your work one of the things they focus on is your attention to craft yes. and I feel like you are a natural storyteller but I also know because I can see the work that you put into craft mm -hmm. in terms of imagery you know metaphors and so on in terms of themes but also in terms of um, form and um, one story that highlights that for me the most I think is hurricane stories because that was a story that frustrated me the most because the characters had no names. And I was like, Wait, what are their names? Who are these characters? But in reading the story, I, I saw how each character was kind of like a prototype in a way. Oops, my earring is okay. Well, I'm gonna put it right back on. I can't be having one earring. Um, and, and how um, the, the theme of that particular story mirrored the form and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, she's really good. <laughs> so this is what she's doing, at least from my, you know, putting on my well, critic this hat. Is, this is the joy of having a writer. My, <laughs> <laughs> putting on my critic hat. I was like, okay, now I can see why this is like yeah. this and why they don't need names. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to talk a little bit about that but I'd love if you would read something from that story. Yes, I'd love to. And, and, and before I do, I want to thank you because I, um, as I said, one of the uh, great joys I think that any writer has is to have readers who read closely and with attention and with yeah. love and with experience. Yeah. And, um, and that's why I think um, you know, it's so wonderful to hang out with writers and one of the joys of being here today. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. So I will uh, read. Um, I don't have my glasses, so I'll, I'll do my best. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, very short. Um, so this is um, a story that it, it it's, uh, takes place on the ocean, by the yes, ocean, on the, the shore. Ocean. I'm trying to remember. It's been yes. almost 20 years. Um, and it's a woman unnamed and her uh, lover who she feels she is losing. Yes. And she is telling him stories. To try to keep him, mm -hmm. yes. right? and uh, so she's telling him story, a story, a particular story about a hurricane that when she was a little girl, for uh, they all prepared for, you know, back uh, she would have been, uh, uh, this would have been in the seventies when she yeah. this story takes place. We didn't have the kind of forecasting we do today. No. Uh, many times they said a hurricane was coming, and it did or it, it did, did not. <laughs> right? You know, more often it did not. You know. Thank goodness, but uh, and so she's telling him the story about a hurricane mm -hmm. that everybody prepared for, her parents prepared for, and then uh, never arrived. Right. So yeah. um, she's talking, and the part that I'm going to read now is her father is uh, preparing the house, putting plywood up on the windows, mm -hmm. and stepping uh, on and off of uh, ladders. Okay. So is that enough of a setup? Yes. Thing? Okay. <laughs> um, my father stepped off the ladder and joined us on the ground, wiping his hands on his jeans. The noise, that's what you remember, really. Um, and let me set this up. The father is talking about another hurricane when he was a boy. Right. He's talking to the girl and the mother. Okay, so I'll start again. My father stepped off the ladder and joined us on the ground, wiping his hands on his jeans. The noise, that's what you remember. Really, you think about the wind and rain, but what stays with you is the noise. Louder and louder, and the whole world seems like it's going to split down the middle. Your poor parents, my mother said. My father nodded. They say the seas joined over Baradero. That's how bad it was. In the morning, all you noticed was the sky. So much of it suddenly. Palm trees knocked to the floor, coconuts like pebbles in the street. The sand had piled so high in front of the door that we couldn't open it. We had to crawl through the kitchen window to get outside. It had started to rain again. There are terrible things, hurricanes, my father said. Nothing to play around with. We were quiet. My father began to whistle. The rain splashed steadily around us, marking soft, dark ovals on the plywood. Mm -hmm. The sky had grown dark and seemed to have shifted closer to the ground. The wind swirled leaves in circles around my feet. 
Do you think he was telling the truth, he asks. The truth? About the seas joining. I don't see how that could happen. I stop to think. I never thought about it, I say. It seemed real the way he told it. Why couldn't it be? I just don't think it's possible. I remember something else my father used to say. It could be true and never had happened. But he wouldn't understand. This man who is like a straight line, an idea without interruption. I'm afraid if I stop talking, if I say something that makes his eyes narrow, that his love will disappear back into the folds of all those stories he hasn't told me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.